Hey, it's Mike. I'm here to show you how to take your ordinary bug and turn it into something like this. Now, I don't know how to make a good video, but I do know how to pin bugs. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so to pin a bug, there are a few basic supplies we need. The first is uh, some sort of styrofoam block. Um, once you start pinning smaller bugs, you might want to double layer because as you're pinning, you're gonna be adding what we call brace pins. So just extra pins going into the styrofoam to help hold the bug and then actual pin through the bug. So the thicker the styrofoam, the better. Um, and speaking of pins, I uh, need insect pins, uh, not just any old pins like quilting pins, those won't work. I uh, need insect pins. Um, size three is a pretty good size um, for pinning your standard bug, uh, but they do come in larger and smaller sizes. Um, forceps can be useful, not required. And then maybe most importantly, you need a bug. So here's a cicada I found dead on my porch actually today. And so when you get your bug, you wanna make sure it is flexible because we're gonna be moving parts around and if it's brittle, everything's gonna be snapping off. So while you're pinning, uh, we're gonna be holding the bugs a lot. I remember the first time I pinned a bug, I had a moment where I realized I was gonna have to hold the bug. And up until that point, I'd avoided actually touching bugs even though I'd been catching them my whole life. Uh, so it can be weird holding the bug. Um, I mean, they aren't like made of glass. You can handle them. Uh, they're actually stronger than you might think, uh, but they are small and they are bugs they can't break. Okay, so we have our bug, and there is a standard place to put the pin. So bugs uh, have a head, a thorax, abdomen. So we pin through the thorax, and the thorax itself is actually divided up into three more parts, and each part has a pair of legs, and we pin through the second part, so right above the middle legs. And uh, you might think we pin in the middle, but we don't, we actually pin off to the side. The reason for that is bugs are symmetrical. If you pin right in the middle, that's line of symmetry, and if there's something there that's important, you lose that wherever the pin is. Uh, so on big bugs like a cicada, it's not too big of a deal. But on smaller bugs, where the pin relatively is a lot larger, that can cause problems. Uh, so we pin off to the right. Uh, you could pin off to the left, um, but you might get funny looks from entomologists. Uh, to the right is standard. Uh, so also helpful are the wings are attached to that middle section too. So you can find where the wings are. So here's head, here's the first part of the thorax, and here's the second. So I'm gonna take my pin, I'm just gonna puncture through just a little bit. So bugs, they have an exoskeleton. Uh, so you can kind of think of them as kind of like an egg. They have a shell on the inside. It's not empty, but it's kind of where the soft guts are. So once you get the pin in, you can see you can kind of move it around still because we're just forming a hole through one side of the uh, thorax. So I'm gonna push it in gently until I feel it kind of stop. Now at this point, I'm gonna look head on, make sure that my pin is perpendicular. And also from the side, you wanna make sure that the bug isn't leaning forward or back. So once it all looks good, I'm gonna take it and just push it through the rest of the way. So you can see as I push, the leg moved a little bit. Uh, so you see my pen came out right through the leg. Uh, coming through the leg might not be ideal, but we have a leg on the other side. Now, once I'm going through, I'm gonna go through. Now with big bugs, you're gonna push through a little more than you might with a smaller bug. Now you still wanna have enough space to hold, but every bug in the museum collection is gonna have a label with the date and location and name of the collector. If there's no label, a museum isn't gonna want it. 
And then below that, there'll be a second label with the identification. So you wanna make sure there's enough room below. Now, once we have that, we can go ahead and set it down, push the pin through until the bug's flat on the styrofoam. Okay, so now there are bugs here. Um, we have to add some brace pins as it dries. Um, so essentially the insides are gonna kind of dry out, rot, um, but the bug, we can preserve them this way because they have the tough exoskeleton. So anything that can move, you have to assume will move. So the wings right now are in a really good position, but as they dry and the muscles inside dry, they could start to maybe fold out. So we're gonna grab a few brace pins. So I'm gonna stick some on either side of the bug just to hold it still. So I just have a couple pins there. They aren't going through the bug at all. They're just holding it. And then I'm gonna set some by the wings. I'm gonna angle them so they can't go up. Kind of form a tent uh, to help hold the wings there as they dry. Now the legs of the cicada are mostly held under the body. Let's add a couple pins so that those legs can't come out. Now in museum specimens, you don't want to keep everything tucked in too close, but you do want to make sure that everything's fairly close because space is limited. So you want to fit as many bugs as you can in the collection. And you also don't want anything sticking out then can get broken off easier. It's like the beetle I showed at the beginning of the video. This would not be good for the museum because that takes up a ton of space and the legs and antenna are very easy to break off. This would be more for display. So just like that, we pin our bug. Uh, we'll let it dry about a week. We can take out the brace pins out the bug and we're good. Now once you do have your bugs pinned and laid out, uh, go ahead, grab a little piece of paper, a pencil or pen, write out the date, location, and then your initials and last name, and then keep it with the bug. And then once it's all dry, you can get an actual label typed up and add it with the bug. But don't count on yourself remembering in a week where you caught this bug, because if you forgot about your bug drying and you come back in like a month and you don't remember, you still have a nice pinned bug, but it's not something you can give to a museum. Okay, so here's another cicada. I actually caught this or found it a year or two ago and it actually dried out. So I put it in some Tupperware with the wet paper towel a little bit of nail polish remover to prevent mold. I left it there for about a day or two, I think two days. You can see it's a little more flexible now. So I don't have the collecting information for this guy, so it won't be good for museum. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of spread it out so that it could be like framed, put up on the wall or something. So I'm gonna start to pull the legs out a little bit just with my hands. Now for these guys, I'm not gonna stick a pin through them. In this sort of situation, after you get it all displayed and it dries back out, you probably just glue it directly to whatever frame it's going in. All right, so we got the legs kind of out. Now the wings. Just kind of make sure they'll move out. There might be like a little give. As you get it kind of flexed back out. Okay, so now we see that everything's moving. Let's get the legs out. We're just gonna set it down next to our other cicada. I want you to scoot over so we have space for the wings. And it's grabbing the styrofoam with its claws. Okay. So I'm gonna stick a couple pins in. Now these are gonna be temporary to hold it 
because they'll be blocking the wings, but I want to get the legs kind of fixed first. So just use the point of the pen to kind of move the legs where you want. Brace them on both sides. Now these legs, I'm going to try to come in at a really shallow angle so that I can get the wings over them. Now the brace pins, I'm using extra insect pins I have, but you could really use any pin for this because they aren't permanent. Anything going inside the bug has to be an insect pen. The brace pins you could use what you use for sewing or quilting or whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I got the legs. Let's grab a few pens. Now let's pull the wings out. Gently. Okay, now I can get them all the way out yet because I need to move my other pens. So I can get some pens holding the abdomen down so that I can pull against that to get the other wings out. Let's move these pins up by the head. Now it's starting to lift up a little bit. Now don't worry, use as many pins as you want to brace. We're gonna pull these out later when it's all dry. see this cicada good for museum nice and compact this guy is taking up a lot more space okay let's make sure they're more or less even and we got the hind wings These are going to be a little harder. I might actually put a pen inside the wing a little bit. If I don't like how that went. Okay, so I actually have a pen through part of the hind wing. I don't like sticking pins through the wing, but. This one's real hard to get out and to keep out. So I'd rather have a small hole in the wing if I can get it out than not have the wing out. Let's do the next one. Oh, this is not going well. Most of my pinning has been in the museums. I'm not good at the display pinning. Hopefully this turns out at least decent looking. You never know. Feel free to move pins out of the way as needed. Okay, that's better. I think I knocked out an entire section of wing, but Happy little accidents, don't we? We're the Bob Ross of insects. Okay, the wings are out, legs are pretty good. I'm just gonna put a few more across the abdomen. Keep it nice and tight. 
And there we go. So there's those two. And now let's move on to the wasp. Okay, so here I have my tarantula hawk wasp. Um, it's also dried out, rehydrated, so it's fairly flexible. Um, one of the antenna did come off though, so we're just gonna glue it. Um, I've never glued an antenna back on, so we'll see how that goes. So we just have a little tissue. Let me pin it down so it doesn't fly away. And I'm just gonna put a little dab of Elmer's glue. Unless it's all dried out. All right, let's get Elmer's glue that works. So just a little drop. I'm just gonna let that sit there and kind of start to dry. I don't want it too wet. I actually glue it. Uh, so the wasp is dead, but there's still a stinger inside its body. So we're gonna be very careful still. Let's just pull all the legs out. Use the forceps a little more with this guy. The cicada is pretty blocky. Wasp, not so much. So a good place to hold a bug is the thorax. So not the head, not the abdomen. Thorax is where the bulk of the muscle is. It's a good support center for the bug. All right, so we're getting the legs out. It's gonna be a little harder to get them out beforehand. All right. So we'll get some initial brace pins by the body. And also with the wasps, their bodies are a little, kind of have like this upward slope, so it's a little tricky to get them laid out initially. Once you get the abdomen out. If I can have it flat against the styrofoam, I like that better. So I have a little more leverage as I'm pulling things out. All right, once again, these are temporary because we'll need to move those to get the wings out. And we'll start pulling the legs out. Make sure they're out and then we'll make them pretty. very well but what are you gonna do okay that works Whoa. so I'm just sliding pins under and coming in at an angle kind of lifting up try to get the wings a little higher if I wanted I could probably get some sort of supports under the wings but I'm here already making the video, so let's just suffer through with the pins. Anyway, now the fun part is to glue this antenna. Try to set this down where it's going to go and 
try to glue it in place so we don't need to move it too much. Perfect. Now Elmer's glue doesn't seem like the most permanent of glues, but for bugs, since it's washable, if you do need to get the part back off, you can wash it off. All right, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of glue on the pen. And I just wanna dab a little bit here. I don't wanna glue it to a pen. I don't want a huge glob of glue, as I think I just did both of those things. She got it. Nope, glued to that one too. It appeared that you should not take my advice. I think we're going to call that good. Let's take a quick look. Could it be better? Of course. Make sure let's fix this back leg really quick. There we go. Better. Closer to symmetrical. Still cool looking. Cool bug. Amateur hour pinning. But I think we're still happy. Okay, so once we're all pinned, we need to give the bugs about, I'd say, a week to dry. Um, the wasp, the cicada, they rehydrated, probably be done sooner. Uh, the cicada, freshly dead, it'll probably definitely take a week. Um, I mean, they're just sitting around. You can let them sit a little longer if you want. Um, so set it somewhere cool, dry, not humid if you can, let them dry. And if you have pets or kids, make sure it's out of reach of this. Cause like I said, these are sharp. You don't want a cat getting into them or a kid. So stick them up in a cupboard, top of a closet, somewhere out of reach. Hey, so it's been about a week or so. So let's go ahead and unpin some bugs and see how they turned out. All right, let's open up our box and take a look at our bugs. And yeah, they look just the way we left them, which is good. I um, didn't expect otherwise. So let's go ahead and start taking the pins out. Okay, so here is our cicada that was spread out. So let's just start pulling the pins out. So just pull them out same way they went in, stick them off to the side. This is a lot faster than pinning. Now as more and more pins come out, 
Since we don't have a pin through the cicada, it's going to start to move a little more. So try to do all the pins around the legs first, and then get the pins that are around the body. All right, so let's get the last few pins out. And now we can carefully pick it up and it's ready. So when we pinned the cicada, it was quite flexible. We can move the wings, we can move the legs. Um, but as the insects are drying out, uh, so we remember their exoskeleton is nice and hard. And you can essentially think of them as being hollow. That's where all their muscles and organs are. So as they dry out, all the internal tissues will dry out and all the connective flexible tissues in between all the joints that will also dry. And so it kind of locks everything into place. So that's how the bugs will hold their shape. But they're also now more fragile because that internal structure isn't there to hold it together. Like all their muscles have shriveled up, uh, they've broken down. So if we were to start bumping the legs or the wings, stuff can fall off. So once they're dry, you want to be very careful. Try to always hold uh, the body. Uh, don't grab the legs or the wings because you'll probably break something off. But here we have our spread cicada and I just knocked the wing right after I tell you not to do that. All right, now our other cicada, this has a pin in it. This was pinned according to museum standards, minus the label. So that was a slacker. So just pull the pins out. Now we can grab the top of the pin, pull it up, and here we go. The wings are staying in place. The legs are tucked under, but not pressed too close to the body. And this is ready to go into a collection. All right, this wasp, this will be fun to unpin. Oh boy. Okay, we have the wasp down to the last few pins. Let's pull those out. And the antenna that we glued back on, looks like it's still intact. Now with wasps, I don't want to grab the abdomen because they have this narrow waist, so I don't want to break. But the wings are kind of in the way, so I'm going to grab some forceps to just slide under there. Help lift this up. Or I might just grab it. So the thorax is a pretty sturdy part. It's where we pin it. It's where the legs and wings and head and abdomen attach. So here we have a wasp. The wings are out, the antenna are out, the legs are out. All looks good. If we turn it sideways, we can see we kind of have that flat plane uh, where the legs all kind of meet and the tip of the abdomen meets. And yeah, that turned out actually better than I expected, which is good. I'm playing this on YouTube. So I'm not ready to put these in the frame or anything right now. So I'm actually going to add just a couple pins around the wasp to keep it in place. There's nothing through it, just a few pins to hold it still. And same for our other cicada up here. But our cicada with a pin through it is fine because it's on a pin. All right, so let's just help keep them in place as they move the box. Okay, so yeah, the bugs are pinned. Uh, now they're ready to go into like a shadow box. So you can just pick one up from a hobby store or online. 
I'll make sure that it has some sort of depth to it. Uh, it's not just a picture frame, there's some space in there. So you need space for the bug. Uh, so when you put that in, you can use a little dab of pot glue or Elmer's glue, um, something to hold it down. Now, on like the wasp, the only points of contact it really has with the styrofoam are its feet, the tip of the abdomen, and a little bit of the head. Um, so when I do mount that, what I'm going to do is probably get a little piece of foam or something to kind of fill in the space between its thorax and the backing of the frame. Uh, the thorax, like I mentioned, it's kind of like the base, everything's attached to it. And so ideally you're gonna have that attached. So just get enough to fill in the space. You can glue that to your shadow box, glue the bug to it. If you want, you can add this small dab to maybe the legs to help hold it in place. And then you're good to go. Stick that up on your wall, get people excited about bugs, and keep catching bugs. Don't know what else to say. It's fun.